Hello everybody, it's your friendly digital technology librarian Christy here. We've reached another Friday, so of course I have another Film Rec Friday ready for everybody out there. So, last week we definitely were dedicating the episode toward more kid-friendly, family-friendly films, but this week, well, it would not be a holiday season with the Milan Berlin Library District if we didn't dedicate at least one episode, and let's be real here, probably more than one episode, to Hallmark holiday romances. So yes, that is exactly what we're doing today. And today's episode actually is going to focus on three holiday romances from Hallmark, all available via the Hoopla uh, Binge Pass Hallmark Now subscription. So what is a binge pass? I'm so glad you asked. Uh, if you have a Milan Berlin library card, you have access to the Hoopla service. And with Hoopla now, you can get a binge pass. A binge pass offers you seven days of unlimited access to certain services, which include the Hallmark Now channel. So with just one Hoopla checkout, you can get seven whole days of tons and tons of Hallmark content, whether you're talking about holiday romances or their uh, westerns or their mysteries, you can get it all. If it's available on holiday now, on, on Hallmark now, sorry about that, uh, you have access to it. And it's wonderful. So with just four of your Hoopla checkouts, you have an entire month's subscription for free. That's pretty awesome. So yeah, as I was saying, today's episode is all about the uh, Hallmark Now Binge Pass and the holiday movies you can get on there. And I've picked three of the newest editions uh, that I think are really, really wonderful. These are actually some of my favorite films that I've seen from the, the company in quite some time. They've really kind of stepped up the game in certain ways, and I'm really, really enjoying the way that they've done that. Uh, so as always, these uh, recommendations are available to you entirely for free with the use of your Milan Berlin Library card. So without any further ado, let's get to the recs. Okay, as I mentioned, all of today's recommendations are quite new to Hallmark's holiday roster. Uh, this pick was just released last year during the holiday season in 2022, and that is Ghosts of Christmas Always. Um, I'm a big Dickens fan. I have always loved his writing. I collect the different editions of his books. But probably one of my least favorite stories is A Christmas Carol. No joke. Uh, that said, when it's a good or interesting adaptation, I'm totally there for it. Muppet Christmas Carol is probably one of my all-time favorite films. And while Ghosts of Christmas Always is not Muppet Christmas Carol, not gonna lie, it does treat the story in a really interesting way. And in one that I think modern audiences will really appreciate and can really grab onto. So in this particular realm that we're dealing with, we have sort of a bureaucracy of holiday ghosts, at least that's how it seems. Uh, when the film opens, we meet a, a young woman named Catherine. She is a ghost of Christmas presents. She's just finished her annual haunting because this is apparently a thing they do every single year. Uh, and she's run out of her Christmas magic. They really can only do their thing while they have that Christmas magic going on. She kind of bumps into this nice young man named Peter. Peter is alive, should probably not be able to see her, but they just kind of, she just kind of goes with it. They have some chemistry. It's nice. They have a little neat cute. And then holiday season is over. She goes to the beyond where she meets up with her compatriots, compatriots, Christmas past and Christmas uh, of the future. And they just sort of have the rundown of their, their, their haunting season. Um, it does seem that you know, this is, as I said, an annual thing uh, where there's a lot of bureaucracy and red tape. You get a file with your target and, you know, it's generally a, a, a fairly unpleasant person who needs to make a change. And your goal is to brighten that person's life after they go through the trauma of looking at their past and potentially looking at their awful future. Um, 
And this is sort of handled nicely by the actors. I didn't know pretty much anyone in this cast with the exception of the Ghost of Christmas Future. And that name is why I decided to check this out. Uh, Ghost of Christmas Future is played by Reginald Vell Johnson. Bill Johnson played Carl Winslow in Family Matters, and even bigger character for me would be he also played Sergeant Al, Al Powell uh, in the Die Hard movies. So I'm a huge fan. I love Die Hard so much. And so I saw he was in this. I was like, I'm sold. Totally watching. And all three of the ghosts do a great job. I, I really do think there's some really fun dialogue and the interplay between the characters. You can sense that they've been doing this a while. This is not a new gig. Um, and you, you get that sort of office feel, which I was not expecting. Uh, you generally don't get that in A Christmas Carol. Uh, and, and I really liked that. And I think a lot of people who are in the working world can, can feel that too. You get that vibe. These people who know like the, the daily grind kind of thing with you and you you have like compatriots in the realm of whatever field you happen to be in and, and you get that vibe and I liked that a lot. Um, anyway, you sort of flash forward a year and their new target when they open, when or at least when Catherine opens her folder because they all have to keep their own counsel, they can't really share information, she sees is Peter, this nice handsome guy that she'd met last year. He seemed really nice. Why is he in her file folder? So she meets him again and starts the haunting. Uh, and we, well, we start with Christmas past, of course, and we start the haunting. He still seems like a nice guy. The, oh, it's, it's very strange, to be honest. You're, you're definitely wondering what is going on. And his past is really quite awful. <laughs> Not in like, the Oliver Twist sense of awful childhoods, but just like there are a lot of really sad moments and you could see how he could be, he could turn into a really horrible person. But again, he's not. And there are definite moments when you're like, that was pretty terrible. There's, there's just a, a an ongoing sense of not quite right with his childhood. Then we get to the present, still a nice guy. And then potential future, still a nice guy. Like, it's very strange. But we move through that. Um, and all through these moments, you still have this lovely chemistry between the two characters, Catherine and Peter. However, there's some weird little bits and bobs where you kind of go, are they related? Are we supposed to, is there not supposed to be chemistry? Is this a weird mix up? And I talked to a couple other friends who watched this and they also felt the same way. Cause I was like, maybe it's just me. Um, but no. So there are definitely bobbles within <laughs> this story. Uh, spoiler alert. And please, uh, there's nothing salacious or strange about it at the end of the day. It's just, there's an ongoing mystery. And I was not expecting there to be a bit of a mystery in this. I just thought, you know, going in Christmas Carol, you know, everybody knows the Christmas Carol. You visit the past, you visit the present, you visit the potential future. Person changes for the better. And that's not the thing. It really, I, I love, that's what I loved about this story, I think, is that your two main people are just genuinely nice people genuinely nice people. It's how to get them together and it's how to make the change that is necessary. And I'm not going to reveal like the change that is necessary because that again is part of the mystery. Um, and, and I don't know that I've seen too many of Hallmark's films that do this sort of roundabout exploration of a relationship and of like, you know, the whole fantasy element. It's, it's, it's usually, a to B to C. There, there are no big detours or anything, but this one is just full of detours and full of twists. And, and it was just a lovely change of pace. And I really liked that it was quite an unusual adaptation of A Christmas Carol. It was, it was definitely fun and it was definitely interesting. And if you are looking for a classic story with a new treatment that again has that modern day appeal, that whole 
that whole bureaucracy bit, I, I really, I really appreciate it. I, I thought this is quite interesting and quite relatable in a lot of ways. Uh, definitely check out Ghosts of Christmas Always. Uh, again, loads of fun, quite well acted, entertaining, and just an interesting take on a classic story. Okay, next recommendation is another tale that was from last year's 2020 holiday lineup, and that is Christmas at the Golden Dragon. I really, really liked this movie. Like just in general, I really, really appreciated it. It was something very new and ambitious for the Hallmark Channel, and I will get a little bit more into that in just a moment. Basic storyline, there is a landmark Chinese restaurant in a Wichita town. Um, it's been a part of people's lives for years and years and years as pretty much the only restaurant open on Christmas Day uh, in Wichita. Everybody goes there for food. That's just the gathering place. That's that's where people order their favorite flavors. That's where people go to meet. It is just this whole community hub, especially at that time of year. And I think a lot of us know establishments like that, no matter what town we are from, where in the country, there's just something that is sort of the heartbeat of a community. Uh, so that's the golden dragon. But when we kind of open up the story, we discover that the golden dragon is about to shut down. And two of our main characters, the owner's two children, um, have to reassess a lot of what Christmas is now that they recognize that this is something that has been a touchstone in their life and it's not going to be there anymore. Uh, the daughter of the family has left Wichita. She now is this sort of hotshot in New York. She feels weighed down by the whole concept of what Christmas was in her past. You know, she obviously spent every holiday season helping out at the restaurant. That was what Christmas was. And she's always had this image of Christmas is supposed to be, you know, this movie depiction of a season, you know, with poinsettias and like sitting down at a big family table and all of these other things. And and that's not, since that's not been what she's experienced, that's what she idealizes, right? And then her younger brother, he has sort of immersed himself in the world of the Golden Dragon. Like this is, this is anything and everything that he will ever be. And it's, it's become a bit of a crutch for him. So you've got these two siblings, totally different viewpoints of this restaurant and how they are coming to terms with this crossroads. But what I loved about this, besides it being a story that actually features Asian Americans, and as someone who is of East Asian descent, I absolutely appreciate a story that speaks a bit more to my culture and um, features performers who, you know, look at least vaguely like me, as opposed to, you know, we, we were now in decades of Hallmark films, right? And for decades, you know, we used to feature, we very rarely featured people of color in especially the holiday romantic stories. So, so that turn in, of, in and of itself was really, really ambitious, I think, for Hallmark. And I, and I do like what they did with it. But beyond that, it wasn't just a romance. It's not just a story about family, but it had a bit of a New Year's Day, Valentine's Day film treatment. So the Golden Dragon restaurant is this central hub, but there are tons of different lives that are touched by it. And we get to see glimpses of all those lives outside of the two siblings. We see a recently widowed uh, woman and how she's dealing with the holiday season. We see a single father trying to relate to his two daughters at the holiday time. I mean, it, it's very interesting how all of their stories sort of inter, uh, interweave. And it's done quite deftly. Like it's, it's a very interesting series of 
little bits and pieces that fit together just so. And I really liked that. I thought it was very, very well constructed. And there are a lot of stories that try and do that that are not well constructed and that do feel a bit like a mismatch of tales. Um, the romances that we do see are very genuine and heartfelt. They are quite traditional Hallmark romances and that they're very sweet and and very much sort of point A to point B. Uh, there's nothing super unexpected about those, but it is really nice to see. It's also really interesting to see, um, especially our female protagonist, how she is trying to fit so much into this very Western styled family and they don't really care that they're, it's not, it's it, at no point does it feel like they are poo-pooing on her background. There's not, none of that, which, you know, I've definitely seen plenty of films that take that route and this is not that at all. It's just, it, it really is just about the sort of connections you make at the holiday time. And I, I liked that a lot. I liked the approach it, that, and, and, and I think that's half the battle when you're a company known for doing a certain kind of story. Anytime you deviate from that, there are myriad potential pitfalls and they do not fall into them. They really don't. And I, I thought that was super respectable and super entertaining at the same time. Like this one is just a really entertaining film. It's heartfelt and it's moving and warm in the moments that you want it to be. And it's not unpredictable. I, it's not, it's, it's not that I'm saying this is like, ooh, twists and turns everywhere. Not true. It's just very well crafted with a slightly different tone. And, and I, I really thought that was great. And if you're looking for something that's just a bit different, a bit off the beaten path from your standard hallmark that, that, that still leans into the tropes that we know, love, and want from a hallmark film, check out Christmas at the Golden Dragon. Really, really excellent film uh, and a great addition to your holiday roster. Okay, final recommendation from our Hallmark Now selections is both the newest and my favorite of these three films, and that is 2023's Take Me Back for Christmas. Take Me Back for Christmas was actually one of Hallmark's Christmas in July uh, releases from just this year, so it's amazing to me how many of these movies they can pop out and still make different enough to be entertaining. And let me tell you, I love this movie. It's not that it was super different. It's not that it's incredibly ambitious. It's not bringing anything super new to the table, but it's just really, really well done from the production to the acting to the story. There's something sort of perfectly holiday about it and it really got me and it really like there was a moment when I got a little teary and I don't ever get teary during Hallmark holiday movies because you know you've seen one you've seen them all it's really, whatever but this one I did and it I, I think it really takes some very well very well directed acting to do that to to bring you into a moment where you're like this feels emotionally resonant and, you, and and to be honest, for me anyway, I don't get that a ton with Hallmark holiday films. I will, I go to holiday home, Hallmark holiday for for lightness and fluff and predictability, you know, and so to be taken by surprise by those emotional moments, that's a big deal. Um, so in Take Me Back for Christmas, it is a bit of a blend of It's a Wonderful Life with um, a Family Man there's a, there's a fantastical kind of wish fulfillment element to it. And there's an element of looking to the past and looking at what might have been regrets and all, and all of these fairly common holiday themes, right? Uh, but pulled together in a way that is highly entertaining and very much feels like a Hallmark film. So again, no big departure. Uh, when we open the movie, we meet Renee. She's lovely. Um, she is a genuinely nice person. She's good at her job, which is a bit of a stagnant dead end job. And that sort of sums up 
most of her life. She's married to a lovely man she's absolutely in love with. She's not in one of those situations like some of these styled stories are where she hates her life and, you know, she's made all these terrible decisions. No, she's just made decisions that anyone would really make where that get her to a point where she's in this unending cycle of paying bills that have uh, piled up feeling like she can't, she doesn't have time to, you know, approach those dreams that she once had and, and, and just going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and being terrified of breaking out of that cycle. And her husband from the get go is so supportive and so lovely. And you just like, you see why the two of them are together. Um, this isn't that kind of romance where she's leaving a terrible situation and finding a better one. No, it's just, the navigation of things. So we get to the fantastical element where at a certain point we enter into what must be a bit of a dream world. We don't know. Maybe it's totally erased her past and but where one decision that she had made at one point shifted everything. And her in her alternate life, she is incredibly successful. She's you know, the CEO and founder of this company, her dream company, which was sort of like a, an approach to uh, feel good meals to help the community. Like I said, she's like heart of gold kind of girl. And the biggest thing that's different in this alternate world is her mother who had passed away in the real world is still alive. And we see that relationship and it's so lovely. And during the holidays, I always get really drawn in to um, stories about children and their parents. And this one just does such a good job. Like, it does such a good job. And that's even more than any romance element in this. I think that touchstone between the two, between the mother and the daughter, is really what makes this special and what makes it different. Um... We also get to see her develop a relationship with her husband, who still in this new world is this hotshot young chef, up and coming chef, uh, and is still a nice guy. Like, it's not like fame and success have changed him. It hasn't. Fame and success hasn't changed her either. She's not supposed to be some horrible human being at this in this alternate universe, which is, I think, part of what makes this such an interesting take on that wish fulfillment element. The world is in a worse place or, you know, it, 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 it's just different. And the whole point is to sort of show her, you know, different choices don't mean a different you. And, and I loved how everything ties back to the relationship with her mother and what, she should do with her real life in relationship to that connection and bond between the two of them. Um, again, this was one of those that really got me, man. Like it, it really did. And it, and it really is that relationship between the daughter and the mother that really kind of made me cry at the end. So if you're looking for something that is heartfelt, there's a lovely romance between wonderful people, not like, and not even sort of that like cold, character with the warm and fluffy character. There's none of that. It's just two nice people falling in love. Yay. Uh, but in a super cute way, this whole thing is like the cutest really between the two of them. Um, there's the lovely soft, fluffy romance, but even more importantly, there's the relationship between that, the daughter and the mother. Uh, and if you are prone to enjoying stories about familial relationships like that, I highly recommend Take Me Back for Christmas. Absolute must watch and my complete total pick of the week. Okay, so those were my picks for this week's uh, Hallmark Now Binge Pass. Uh, there will probably be more next week as well. But if you have any recommendations that you would like to make, please comment with those below. If you have any recommendations for themes that you would like to see us cover in the future, definitely comment with those. Always looking for help there. Um, as always, thank you so, so much for joining me. I love putting these lists together, especially the holiday films. It's just such a blast. Uh, so with that, I'm going to close out the episode and hopefully I will see you next week. Bye-bye.